Hey makers, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marion, and here on YouTube, I'm helping candle makers to make better candles and sell them online. And if you've been following me for a week or two years, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Today, we're going to talk about things to consider if you want to start making candles in 2024. Let's dive in. <laughs> So in the list of things to consider first is what type of candle you want to make. When I mean what type of candle, I don't mean what wax you're going to use because this is still further down the line. I'm talking about are you going to make pillar candles like this or are you going to make scented candles um, or container candles or maybe both. Are you going to be doing wax melt as well? It's It sounds like an afterthought, but it should be your main um question to start because it's not it's not the same thing making decorative candle and making a uh, container candle we you probably know that now if you've been following me for a while i'm kind of an advocate that uh, it both of them are really technical they're very different um i was very foolish and jumped both feet in and did both but i really struggled at the beginning to master both um so i think you should pick one to start with and build your brand around that to start with. So either you're going to be, be making sculptural candle, decorative candles, or pillar candle, whatever you want to call them, or container candle. So first of all, what type of candle do you want to make? That's number one. Number two is going to be what is your niche? You're going to need to find a niche. If you just want to make plain scented candle or just regular decorative candle, you're not going to get there. The market of candles is saturated around the world. Is there room for more makers? Yes, but you need to be going after a niche. What does it mean? It means you want to focus on a very small proportion of the market. So maybe you want to make scented candle, but with a rude message. I'm, I've got so many examples in the UK. I don't know if it's fit for every country, but in the UK, some very popular scented candles are with a rude message and people love it as a gift or throughout the year. Um, if you want to make decorative candle, I chose to make unscented white wax like no colors uh decorative candle in the very clean sleek lines um non-figurative candles that's my niche and this is what i've been st sticking with um but you've been you could be going with uh only colored candle or pastel kind of candles um, I've seen that brand who focused on hand gesture and you know which one I mean. I'm not going to make it because I want to keep my YouTube channel. But you know what I mean? Like there's def different niche of products and you could be focusing on one of that and doing that really well and focus your brand only on this. And I know it sounds restrictive, but actually it's going to open up more things. I've seen lots of things around manifestation as well like candles to um burn when you're doing yoga practice like as a um as a add-on to your mindfulness journey this is great niche as well uh to to be on so think about it think about the thing that you're passionate about in your actual life and try to create a product that is going to fit in because if it fits in with you it's going to fit in with other people it's going to be easier to market and to get out there so number two, find your niche. Number three, how do you want to sell your candles? Are you going to be selling on markets? Um, therefore, you will need to invest in a gazebo, tables, all the setup for your stand, etc., etc. Or you want to go online on your own website, Etsy. Do you want to do wholesales? Those are four things that you really want to explore before you launch your brand and before you start making, you start ordering supplies. Why? It's because your pricing structure will be impacted by the channel you want to sell on. Explanation being that wholesale, if you want to go into wholesale, which is a great way to drive cash fast, um, you will need to build price that makes your wholesale price still work for you. As a rule of thumb, your wholesale price should be double your cost price and your online selling price should be full time your 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 cost price that's the basic rule of thumb you'll see if you google it or look for it there's a way to fine tune this to be even more profitable but if you launch your product with not enough margin and then you go into wholesale you're going to lose money 
So knowing how you want to sell beforehand is also going to be key. Etsy is a second conversation that you need to think about. I know there's a big debate around Etsy and the fees, etc. Etsy for me is an absolute saving uh, for my business. I would not be in the situation I, in, I am in without Etsy. So I say do it and consider it and account for the commission because Etsy is going to take a commission. But I think it's fair because they drive the traffic. It costs you. It would cost you so much more to drive that kind of traffic to your own website that the commission they take is actually um, not that big. So I would also explore the re the relevant uh, handmade marketplace uh, in your country. That would be tip number three. Number four, how much are you ready to invest? And it's not only money because you will need to invest money. And depending on the scale of the business you want to build, a lot of money. But the time, the space, look around. I've dedicated like a full room in my house for my candle making business, a full room. So do you have the space to actually scale up your business? That's one question to ask. Or are you going to start your business in your kitchen? Which I did. I just built up to it. So if you only have space in your kitchen, but you have a space, it's already something. But be mindful that it is going to eat up at your money and at your living space if you're doing it from home. Are you willing to give that up? And the third part of this fourth point is your time. How much time can you actually dedicate to mastering the craft, building a website, making candles, shooting content, customer service, packing orders, etc., etc. I work a full-time nine to five job as a permanent job. I do that. I've been working full-time every every ever since I started my business. So all my evening, all my weekends are dedicated to the business. Are you willing to sacrifice your social life, maybe dating for your business? Those are real consideration to really think about before jumping in. That was point number four. Number five, do you understand and know the rules and regulation in your country for making and selling candles, whether in stores or online. That's different from a country to another. This is why sometimes in comments I can't help you out. I live in the UK. I fully understand the regulation in the UK, but I would not be able to help for Canada or, I don't know, India. I don't know about that. But be careful because on Instagram or on YouTube, you see lots of things that you're like, oh, I wish I could do that. I'm going to do like candle that looks like food or milkshake. I've talked about this uh, in a previous video. I put the link there. It's a great idea in principle, but you're going to get caught and you're going to get a fine in the UK for doing this and your business is going to be shut down and you don't want that. So be mindful and know what you can and can't do, what are the regulation. For example, in the UK, you cannot make candle that look like food. So candle that look like milkshake or a bowl of cereals or whatever, you can't do that. As pretty as they are, as great as they are, and they are, and don't get me wrong, I admire the craftsmanship to be able to do this. As a candle maker, I get it, I see how hard this is, but I would get my business closed down if I was doing that. In the UK, you can't mix fragrance oil together. You have to be extremely rigid with your labeling, uh, you need to showcase some of the harmful um, chemicals within fragrance oil at, on your candle, on the safety label, each safety label is different per fragrance. So there's so much difference. So do you understand this? Do you understand the landscape, legal landscape that regulates the craft in your country? That's really important before you decide to go ahead. And number six, and I think it's the hardest one because it's really looking at what you know, can and can't do. Do you have the skills? And I know it's a tricky one. Do you have the skills? Can you make candles? Do you understand how to safely make them? Do Can you create a website? Do you understand how to manage a social media account? Do you understand how to create products, copywriting, etc., etc.? All those skills that you will need. Accounting, like I hate it. I have to pay for an accountant because I know that I'm not able to do this. Like, so in my small business, for example, I've taken a lot on myself. I do my own content, I do my own copywriting, I build my own website, I make every single one of my candle. I've spent hours, days, weeks training myself 
testing and failing multiple times. I know on this channel we look more at success and candles looks perfect, but they do look perfect now because I've spent like I've spent so much time failing and making candles that were crap. Like candles that were like full of bubbles and breaking and completely like failing burn test and um, scenting candles you're not seeing all the one with giant flames sinkholes that extinguished after two minutes like all the the test and trial that is invisible but get to the point of a great product so the skills and being very honest with yourself about what you know you can do and what you're gonna have to outsource so Lots of this, I don't want you to panic either, because it doesn't mean it's not meant to discourage you from doing it. I think it's just a case of, are you ready to educate yourself? Are you ready to train yourself and like fail? Because it's going to be like this. It's going to feel hard. It's going to be hard, but it's also going to be really rewarding. And be very honest on the thing you can't do. I, for the life of me, I could probably try and learn accounting. I've learned all the other things, but really, I don't want to. And I'm in the stage now with the business that I can afford to pay for an accountant. That's the first thing. That's the only thing that I'm currently outsourcing in my business. I'm doing everything else. I've learned everything else. Am I great at everything? No. <laughs> Am I willing to pay for someone to do it instead of me? Not yet. So I don't have much of a choice. I kind of like have to face it head on and go for it. So that's point number six. And to conclude this... Those are just like point to consider even before making your first candle. It's about when if you're really serious about making it a business. And those are uncomfortable questions because you're going to be facing answer that are going to tell you not to do it. And this is where your entrepreneurship should take over. This is where your mindset and your motivation is going to come through. Because if you really want this, if you really believe you've got a product that you can put out there, that is going to find customer, make you money, and that you're going to be great at making, you should do it. You should do it now. You should do it. But ask yourself, go through the motion of those very easy six questions to go in with open eyes and understand what your challenges are. And answering those questions is almost going to write you a roadmap on things to do to build your business. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit of a different type of video. Um, I hope it's helpful for you out there that are thinking about launching your candle business this year. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's helping the channel more than you know. And I will see you very soon with more content. Bye.